Westminster politicians are to rally against Nicola Sturgeon and Alex Salmon is to finally publish his evidence against the SNP leadership. Hello everyone and welcome to today's program. We only have one video for you guys today but it's going to be a juicy one because tomorrow is going to be a huge day in Scotland. Alex Salmon is to finally appear in front of the Scottish Parliament to provide his evidence against Nicola Sturgeon and her leadership team. Uh, we had uh, Westminster politicians, especially the SNP MPs who are still loyal to Alex Salmon, the former First Minister, uh, actually rising up against the Nicola Sturgeon. Uh, the, you know, the, her peak of leadership is truly gone at this point because we've had uh, people like Angus McNeil, who a couple of days ago started tweeting things like this, saying that, so yesterday the establishment said that Salmon must provide the evidence, but then today they say that Salmon must not provide the evidence. This doesn't look good for Holyrood, and the Crown Office, office looks crooked. It, if, the, if the actual members of the SNP are now attacking the uh, Scottish establishment at this point, it shows that the SNP is not only split, uh, but the, the whole the, the, the concept of the Scottish government and Scottish Parliament is now going to be questioned by everyone, including people in London and across the country in general. Um, as I said, there are still a number of loyal supporters that uh, Nicola Sturgeon has specifically in the Scottish Parliament uh, rather than in London in Westminster. But the, what we've had, we are waiting for tomorrow because earlier this week uh, they decided to uh, remove the evidence that uh, was against Nicola Sturgeon, which was a bit dodgy, uh, but tomorrow they're going to actually allow Salmon to state what he has to say. Uh, we've had a number of uh, other members of the Scottish Parliament, including Jackie Bailey, who came out to actually question the judgment of the SNP establishment when it comes to removing the evidence. This is what they had to say. I appreciate how difficult this situation is for the corporate body, but it's been publicly reported that the Crown Office wrote to the Scottish Parliament last night threatening the Parliament with contempt of court action on the publication of Alex Hammond's evidence. Given that the Lord Advocate is in charge of the Crown Office and a member of the Government, he should be invited to make an urgent statement to this Parliament. And given the significant public interest, will the presiding officer publish the letter from the Crown Office to the Parliament so we understand the restrictions placed on the corporate body. So this is the first question and uh, she's simply asking for that you know, evidence and also justification. This SNP establishment in the Scottish Parliament are going to come out to talk about confidentiality. One, the evidence that was removed is already in public, it's online, you can see it, it's on Guido Fawkes website and other places as well. Secondly, this is in public domain. This is the in interest of the uh, well, British people, not just people in Scotland. But this is the response that we have. Thank Jackie Bailey for the uh, point of order. And uh, can I first of all say, say that I recognise the frustration that members uh, express and feel across the chamber. I am aware that uh, most members uh, will not be aware of the full context of uh, this matter because it is a matter of great confidentiality. Uh, therefore, I will not comment on it specifically. However, I, I will certainly bear the request for an urgent statement in mind, and I will consult with colleagues in the Bureau. Uh, and I believe I've also had a request for an urgent question, which I'll also have a chance to consider later. All right, so let me get this straight. Something that is in the interest of the public is in great confidentiality. Secondly, it's already public. <laughs> it's already out of there. And these people are trying to cover up something that cannot be covered up. Uh, that's the biggest problem that right now they're facing. Um, now, Nicola Sturgeon herself was being questioned uh, during, you know, one of her daily press briefings. You know, she loves those things because, you know, it's, it's for public health, but she uses that platform to rant about politics. She's done it previously to rant about Donald Trump, to rant about Brexit, to rant about anything else that she doesn't like. Uh, but, you know, she's, you're not allowed to question her. This is the weirdest thing because I'm just going to show you the clip. Try and see if you can understand what she's talking about. If I could read you a quote, there was discussion about the investigation, the process of it, the fact it was a civil service investigation being conducted by civil servants. That's an account from someone in discussion with you about the investigation into Alex Salmond in your office on March the 29th, 2018. Have they misremembered those details? 
Uh, that's not an account that I uh, would uh, agree with. I can't speak for somebody else, and I don't know for sure, apart from what you've just told me, exactly whose account that is. But I hope uh, that I'll be before the committee uh, looking at these matters uh, a week a week today. Uh, this is Wednesday, um, and I'll be able to answer all of these questions. Okay, so this question was simple. It was about the fact that uh, there was legal advice that the SNP government received at the time saying that don't pursue this, you're going to lose. You have to spend taxpayers' money. They said, yes, let's do it. Then they hired these top lawyers to train their, their, their leadership team, team and again, the senior civil servants as well, from her chief of staff to everybody else. And somehow, after being trained, they lost all their memory. They forgot everything that happened. This is the biggest problem. And she's just come out and say, oh, I don't actually remember that. I don't, I don't really think that's the case. And I can't speak on behalf of other people. You are their manager. It's a simple thing. Again, on BBC, she was <laughs> questioned about the meeting she had with Alex Salmon a few years ago now. And uh, apparently, the meeting doesn't count because in her head, it wasn't significant enough to be a meeting. There's since been an issue raised about a meeting I had with his former chief of staff three days earlier. He gave you the heads up. Hey, look, that's a meeting that's never held any significance uh, in my head. But if it was the first time that you'd heard... Look... So she had a meeting with his chief of staff. She actually says it was a meeting. But then she says, well, no, it didn't really count as a meeting because it wasn't in, in my head. I didn't consider it as a meeting. What well, is it because, you know, you're, you, you were seeing that person as in, inferior that, you know, they're not allowed to have a meeting with you. Or you just decided afterwards when you got the facts that, oh, yeah, pr it's probably best to just forget about this meeting or non-meeting meeting. It's getting embarrassing. Again, we have one day left. I really hope that Alex Salmon doesn't just disappear again or if they p push him out. But at this point, I think tomorrow is going to be happening. It's gotten so bad that, it, as I said, Westminster politicians from all parties finally have decided to unite against this. You got the SNP MPs themselves, you got Labour Party, some of them, and also some of the Tories, including Dr. Leon Fox, who stood up in Westminster uh, to say this. Point of order, Dr. Leon Fox. Madam Deputy Speaker, yesterday the former First Minister of Scotland, Alex Salmond, accused the Scottish Government of, and I quote, the complete breakdown of the necessary barriers which should exist between government, political party and indeed the prosecution authorities in any country which abides by the rule of law. Madam Deputy Speaker, this would be a damning indictment in a tin pot dictatorship, but this is happening in a part of the United Kingdom. Given that the Scottish Parliament derives its authority from legislation passed in this Parliament, what mechanisms do we have to ensure that the conduct of the Scottish Government does not bring politics in the whole of the United Kingdom into international disrepute. Well, he's absolutely right. It is literally like a tin pot dictatorship. And it's embarrassing that the SNP leadership have actually turned the whole of the establishment in Scotland into this. And uh, there are a lot of people who are now talking about how London and the Prime Minister Boris Johnson could use certain powers when it comes to devolution. But again, I don't think the London politicians are brave enough to do anything when it comes to the devolution that Tony Blair introduced uh, and it's now a complete mess. Uh, but again, as I said, we have to wait until tomorrow to see uh, what the situation is going to be because it's now been confirmed that Alex Salmon will appear before the uh, Holyrood and the Scottish Parliament to actually discuss this and uh, I will keep you guys posted. So I might either do a live reaction to it tomorrow depending on what time it is. I think it's going to be around midday uh, but uh, otherwise I'll just come back to you either at 5.45pm or at 8 p.m. Now, in today's segment of News in Your World, we have a follow-up story. If you guys remember a few days ago, Zender, one of our subscribers, sent us an email about Tommy Clough, who was a, a soldier uh, during the Korean conflict. And uh, when he was 18, he was captured. He was kept for about two and a half years. So he spent two of his birthdays when he was young in isolation. And this week, yesterday, was his uh, 90th birthday again spent in isolation. Now Zender mentioned that the uh, Soldiers Museum in Gloucester uh, decided to start a campaign uh, last week uh, to get people to send birthday cards to Tommy. Uh, yesterday was his birthday as I said and we have received confirmation from the museum that uh, they have received over 1,500 birthday cards. Uh, so a lot of them obviously from you guys. So thank you so much for uh, joining this campaign and everybody else in the local area and across the country who uh, sent Tommy uh, birthday cards. Uh, we have a video message from Tommy Clough himself. 
Hello everybody. Um, I'm sat here in my garden. It's not very pleasant weather, but at least it's dry. But I've got to have, I can't lose this opportunity to say thank you. Thank you. It seems inadequate, it usually is. But all I can say, I really appreciate your kindness, affection, and really, really kind messages and thoughts. I've started to read some of the cards, and Vicky has read some of them to me. But of course, it's going to take a while, and I must, of course, try and reply to the people, and there are quite a few of them, who sent me gifts. Well, that's absolutely amazing and happy birthday again, Tommy. And uh, I hope you, you know, keep up the good fight and then soon enough, you'll be able to go back to the pub with everybody else as well. Uh, if you guys also want to have a chance to be featured in News in Your World, then feel free to share us your positive stories, anything happy going on in your life. Uh, as I said, yeah, usually it's best to attach any photos or videos that you guys have. It could be anything from personal achievements or if you want to do a shout out to anyone, family members or friends that have done something good, send your stories to lacy at my2c.co.uk. And uh, thanks again for watching. Do not forget, if you want to help the channel and uh, help to um, spread the videos, the best thing to do is, if you're not subscribed, subscribe, but also click on the thumbs up button. Click on a like or thumbs up button under the video that's the best way to do it thanks again for watching i'm my atc and i'll see you guys in the next video